Starting off tonight with Devil May Care Brewing's Trinity Creme Brulee Stout. Yeah, just in case stout wasn't sweet enough already. An imperial stout that pays homage to that special dessert. Silky smooth, full-bodied, and packed with creamy vanilla. Hmm. Yeah, vanilla, maybe a bit of coconut or something. Definitely roasty, definitely sweet. Wow. Anyway, um, that's not the main focus of tonight. This is, this is a mysterious little screen that I picked up at a thrift store, a secondhand store, for the princely sum of 75 Canadian cents. And initially when I looked at it, I just saw the price tag on the front, saw that it is an LCD screen, probably. Noticed there's an SD card slot on the side of it, and figured, okay, that's probably going to be a digital photo frame. So I grabbed it. And when I got it home, I looked a little bit closely, a little bit more closely, and I noticed there's no power plug on it, which you'd expect from a digital photo frame. There's one button on the back. Okay, you can do a lot with a menu system with one button, but you'd expect power. And I also noticed that it's been opened more than once, and not especially gently. So that got my curiosity up. Of course, that was after I'd bought it. So since somebody else has already mangled it, opening it, I figure I might as well give it a shot too and see what's inside this thing. I suppose I could use a spudger, but why? Why bother? I'm not the first one to mangle on this thing. Get open. There we go. Aha! First thing I see, we have a lithium-ion battery. Oh, a LiPo polymer cell, 3.8 volts, 2400 milliamp hours. That's cool. 2017 vintage. Do not crush, disassemble, short circuit, incinerate, bend, fold, staple, or mutilate. Right. Let's just unplug him from there. I wonder if it's got any jam left in it, actually. Hmm. I'm not expecting so, but you never know. Actually, straight up 4 volts. That's not a bad storage voltage. That's actually a little high for storage voltage. Because who knows when the last time this thing was powered on was. But that is worth the 75 cents right there. Right, let's see what this really is. Warning, removing PCB from housing could cause damage to the key keypad LCD. Ooh, it's a touch screen. That's cool. Uh, we have an SVC ID. We have... Circuit board ID up there. DMP series 9800. Is that the manufacturer? Maybe. Maybe you have to look it up by this FCC ID. I don't know. Regardless, we'll continue taking it apart before we try and figure out what it really is. But so far, we know that it's battery powered, presumably rechargeable in some way. It has a touchscreen LCD on it. Uh. And yeah, there is an SD card slot over there. Digital Monitoring Products, Inc. And a website, uh, 2013 to 2016 copyright dates. That matches with the 2017 battery. That's cool. Can I remove this without destroying it? Yeah, there we go. One touchscreen LCD liberated. And it's got part numbers and stuff on it, so... Hmm, that'd be cool if we could look up a driver for it. Possible salvage. And possibly, if we can wake this thing up, maybe we can still use it. Uh, what can we learn about this thing? A few solder pads on the back. The connector down here, and there's another connector footprint over here. Uh, that is a four-pin connector. Um... Apparently the black wire goes on that side and the black and white wire goes on that side when you plug it in. What else? We've got a little beeper over here. Some various different components and stuff. I'll look them up in a minute. Uh, we have the big chip here made by NXP. Uh, Y3, that'll be a crystal that clocks it. A few smaller chips. And what is this one? Alliance. I'll look that up in a minute too. So this looks kind of power supply-ish over here. 
There's another one that looks like it could be kind of power supply-ish over here. But I'm noticing that this transistor here is completely mashed and destroyed. So I wonder if the previous owner did that, uh, or if somebody else, or if I did that. don't think so, but you never know. But whatever happened there, that's likely one of the symptoms of it ending up in a second-hand store. I thought this was a bezel or something, because there's a couple of LEDs back there, but no. It's an inductor form. Probably an antenna, actually. That does look kind of antenna-ish. Does that mean that there's some RF circuitry going on over there? Hmm. First thing, I think, though, from here, I'm going to look this thing up and see what the hell it is. Because it's obviously not a photo frame. Well, I'm putting their URL on the uh, circuit board made it real easy to find them. And as you can see from the little slideshow that's going on here, I think we saw one of them already, but they seem to be an alarm uh, manufacturing, alarm hardware manufacturing company. Uh, intrusion, video, fire access control, wireless, etc. That's kind of neat. Products, keyboards, keypads. Well, that looks familiar. Hello. Touchscreen keypad, high security touchscreen keypad. Uh, this one doesn't have a kickstand on the back, so I'm going to look at this one here. Yeah, okay, it's an alarm control keypad LCD thing. Right. Digging around a bit further, and I find an installation and programming guide. Well, well, well. Removing the cover. Yep, I figured that one out all by myself. Wire goes in through the slots on the back. Okay, so onto that four pin connector. It takes a power supply. Hmm, I'm going to see if I can find anything about that power supply. How to replace the battery. 12 VDC. That's what we needed to learn. Right. Let's put that keyboard back on, that uh, keypad, that screen, and see if we can figure out how to get some power onto this thing. If it even works with that broken off transistor. So I just bodged a couple of wires onto the outer two pins of that power jack, which looks like what it showed in the manual and in continuity mode here I'll go from the negative of the battery and see if either of these are negative or okay so my blue bodge wire is the minus of my 12 volts and this wire is my positive right so the installation manual also shows a little jumper between the two center pins of that but for that, I'm not going to bother soldering on the back of it. I'm just going to use this little two-pin micro JST connector and plug into the middle, too. Initially, I tried to put two of these side by side, but they wouldn't fit because that's not how they're designed. But this seems to work. I'm just plug that into the middle two pins. And then I think we should be good to go. Power supply set for 12 volts. Wow, it draws down to six right away. Current limiting at 200 milliamps. Hey, would you look at that? That's cool. Nothing works on the touch screen. It's drawing 275 milliamps thereabouts. And it's come online. This one seems to have used to belong to a company called Protelic, which is an alarm company alarm provider in my area here so there's no communication with the system oh wow that's really funky uh, the screen's got a whole bunch of weird lines and crap in it okay i'm gonna power it off if it was powered on oh there we go okay press the pair Nothing seems to be happening. Turn the power back on again. Nothing seems to be happening. Hmm. So that's clearly the problem. The screen is just not happy. It seems to be wandering in and out of functionality. It doesn't seem to be behaving. It doesn't have a system that it can talk to. Oh no, there goes the screen again. Okay, so it seems to be wandering in and out of screen. I don't know whether you can see that very well. 
but the screen is sort of washing out and then comes back every once in a while but that has nothing to do I don't think with that connector back there anyways we'll power it off again the battery seems to hold it for a little bit anyway it sort of works but I think the screen is part of the problem maybe the screens controller but probably just the screen I'll still look that up and see if that's something that anybody's ever hacked before that could be interesting but I think for now about all that's left to do is take a closer look at a couple of these chips and just see if we can figure out roughly what's going on I mean we've got all the clues already there's going to be some hardware to read the SD card that might just be serial lines into one of these two big chips there's going to be some charge circuitry for the the lithium battery there's going to be some RF circuitry for this neat little board all in all I think nothing nothing too hackable on it I don't suppose it's all softer inside there but I guess we can look up some of these chips I don't know whether the microcontroller or its partner there is going to be all that interesting so that big kahuna chip on there is a 32-bit arm cortex m3 microcontroller wow that's a lot of power eight channels of dma controllers five uarts two can bus channels uh spi i squared c i2s 12-bit adc wow it's just everything on there the second biggest chip on the board is a 256 meg uh sd ram this is like small computer stuff this isn't what you'd expect to find in just a simple little remote control Let's see what these smaller guys are mc34074 sounds like it should be a very standard chip up by that antenna of an mc34074 which is a quad op amp doesn't seem like an rf uh, device but 4.5 meg is definitely up in rf world hmm ac04g is that the part number or on semiconductor anyway uh pmr e26 getting weird results for that other chip that's up by the antenna maybe that's what it is a six independent inverters but ac04g comes up with that which it isn't one of these two guys here is probably going to be an eprom or something like that yeah, I kind of figured that looked like a memory chip of some sort. Uh, it is an SPI, uh, serial non-volatile memory. Yeah, I can't find an exact part number match, but I assume it's going to be either 256 or 512. Is that Netmail part number? I think it is. I had to go a little bit off the beaten track to find this guy, but apparently it's a memory chip according to this oh so trustworthy site it is an ee prom with integrated electronic timing of some sort and there is all the details for anybody who cares to read them then over in this corner of the board with the inductor and the capacitor and the big diode it looks kind of power supply-ish to me and then in the opposite corner of the board the one with that busted up transistor close to the lithium ion uh, connector where is that little chippy chip there that little guy's going to be hard to read but odds are pretty good that it's going to be controlling charging for that lithium battery even if I can't get in to read that I'm going to guess that's what it is I mean what else could it be inductor diode some small capacitors a couple of transistors and a little control chip yeah odds are that's going to be charging the battery no idea what that guy is these all show up as an led so that ain't it but i stand by my guesstimate that that is probably a power supply chip of some sort so it looks like most of the lines go down through the board from the lcd or tft and yeah they all come over out of this main chip which isn't surprised it is a really capable chip so it's probably just driving it directly without any driver interface all that stuff on there i don't think there's any logic on there i think that is just capacitors to keep everything smooth and clean and happy
Yeah, that's what that legend says up there. It's all just capacitors and resistors. Okay. This is a stroke of luck. I actually found the part number for that display. So it's not an LCD, it's a TFT. Okay, uh, 480 by 272, 24-bit RGB interface. There is the pinout. Operates on 5 volts. Okay, have to remember that. So some of the chips wanted 3.3 volts. This wanted 5 volts. So there's going to be a couple of different power supplies on that because the incoming power was 12 volts. So if somebody was to try and... Uh, run this thing through their own hardware there's most of the information you would need for timing and stuff this is a fairly complete little uh, data sheet nice that's kind of cool though um i didn't expect there to be that much brain power in what is essentially a remote control for an alarm system anyway at minimum out of that i got some amusement some entertainment and i got a fairly uh chunky little lithium pouch cell which is still in good shape so that is a win right there it's even a protected cell you can see the circuitry on the end there under that chunk of capton so it's definitely worth the 75 cents i played and paid for it but anyway uh that was a fun little exploration thanks for joining me on this trip uh questions and comments anything else down below i'm going to wander off and finish my creme brulee i'll talk to you later